Hello, welcome to Pass the Price L Web Tuition. In this session, we're going to see questions on study designs and case control studies. I'm Lena Palaniapan, and I'm going to take you through this session today. Please note that reproducing this material is prohibited. We hold the copyright for all of these video materials and printed materials that are distributed to you. Making copies is against law. Please do not distribute this material without our permission. In this session, we'll cover the MCQs and EMIs on study designs, interpreting results of case control studies, long SBA type questions on hip fracture and antipsychotics, dementia and suicide, suicidality after antidepressant use, obstetric complications, and schizophrenia. To prepare for this session, you have to watch the video lectures on basics of study design, analytical studies, evaluating outcomes, understanding confidence intervals, understanding confounders, and understanding effect size. All of these videos are available with your subscription. I would also expect you to have familiarity with the following PDF revision notes. The topic on study designs, analytical studies, causality, epidemiology and evaluating causation. You can access them either through SPMM website or through the Pass Appraisal website where these notes are uploaded as PDF files. Okay, the first question is an EMI on study designs. Choose one appropriate design for each scenario below. You have four questions and you have options from A to J describing various study designs. Let's see these questions one after the other. Question one, to identify the prevalence of type two bipolar disorder in primary care mental health counseling services, what type of study design would you use? It's important to note that cross-sectional surveys help calculating prevalence rates. Whenever you are interested in the prevalence of any phenomena, any health phenomena of interest, you can use a cross-sectional survey to study how common that phenomena is in a sample of the population and you can then extrapolate that number from the sample to the entire population provided that the sample is representative of the population from where the sample comes from. So for question number one, in order to identify the prevalence of bipolar disorder in the, sam in the sample of primary care mental health counseling attendees, you could use a cross-sectional survey. Question two, to understand the perspectives of detained inpatients on the quality of care they receive from the admission units. Now this question has a very important key phrase, quality of care, and another phrase, another word, perspectives. Whenever you try to understand the perspectives or attitudes of people about a specific phenomena, you could use a qualitative design. So for this question, number two, the answer is qualitative study. Question three, to determine the risk of psychotic disorders, among asylum seekers in London. Risk is nothing but incidence. Risk is a ch the chance that an event is going to happen at some point in the future. Because you are incorporating future in defining risk, it's very important that you understand risk can only be measured if the design, uh, design has a temporal sequence. It should be a prospective design, preferably. Only then you can measure risk of a, a given phenomena. So, cohort studies are best place to identify the risk that is described here. If you want to find out what is the risk of psychosis in a group of people who are asylum seekers, you can assemble a cohort of asylum seekers and you can study them for a period of time to understand how many of them develop psychosis. And this will give us the uh, estimate of risk that we are interested in. Next question, the, the, the researchers want to evaluate the usefulness of a new medication for clozapine-induced hypersalivation. 
Due to economic reasons, they want to recruit a smaller sample but still have adequate power in the study to establish clinical usefulness. So you want to evaluate how useful a new medication is for siloria. Whenever you study the effect of an intervention, either the beneficial effect or the side effect of an intervention, the best method to query the effectiveness is a clinical trial design. And in particular, a randomized clinical trial would answer the question that you are interested in. But there is, there is a problem here. They do not want to recruit a large sample. They want to recruit a small sample but still have the same power. In this case, you can do what is called a crossover trial. Small samples can generate better power if you take a part of the sample, use that as one arm of the study, and then after the first phase of the study is over, you cross over, so you exchange the first arm to the second arm and the second arm to the first arm. So people who get placebo or the standard treatment in the first few weeks of the trial will later get the active treatment and people who initially get active treatment will later get the placebo or the standard drug. In this way, everyone in the uh, sample will get both placebo and the active treatment. So the answer for this question is a crossover trial. So just summarizing all the answers here, the first question cross-sectional survey, second question qualitative studies, third question cohort study and fourth question is crossover trial.